Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create portable installs in Reaper. Now I'm doing this on Mac, but this will work the same way on PC, except for the first part. One of the benefits of using Reaper on PC is that when you install it, you have this option right here, portable install. If you check this checkbox during installation, it'll create a portable install for you. On Mac, we have to create it manually, but everything else in the video will be the same for both Mac and PC. Now you're probably wondering, why would I want to use a portable install? There's quite a few different reasons, actually. One reason is that it's a great way of taking Reaper with you. Like on a USB flash drive, we can install Reaper on that drive and keep all of our preferences, configurations, presets, effects chains, keyboard shortcuts, and anything else we customize in Reaper right on that drive. So we can take that drive with us to any studio and everything comes with it. No need to even install Reaper on the studio's computer. We could run it right off the flash drive. Another reason is if you want to update Reaper to a newer version or even a beta version, and you don't want to worry about it not being stable enough for production. Or if you just want to try out the new features while still having the option of going back to the previous stable version, you could do that as well. Just keep multiple portable installs and run them separately. Another reason is for troubleshooting. If you happen to install a bunch of custom scripts or third-party themes and Reaper isn't working the way you expect, you could always install a clean portable install to make sure Reaper is working correctly with your computer and audio interface, as you may have some corrupted files in your current install. And finally, and my favorite purpose for portable installs, is to keep multiple customized versions of Reaper based on what you're working on. For instance, you might have one install just for recording audio, and maybe another for mixing it, and still another for working with MIDI, and maybe one more for working with video. Because Reaper's size is so small, we can afford to use a different install for every project type we're working on, and customize each of them for how we want to work for that type of project. So double clicking one item in one install can be assigned to do something completely different in a different install. So let me show you how to set this up. As I mentioned earlier, the first part is mainly just for Mac, as we don't have the portable install button to do it for us. So assuming we want the newest version of Reaper, let's go to the website and go over here and download the newest version. This will also work with older versions, so feel free to use those instead. I'm on a Mac, so I'll choose this one. And when it downloads, it looks like this. Now normally, you grab the application and put it in the Applications folder, but we're not going to do that for a portable install. Instead, we're going to put this in a folder. And we can put it in any folder we prefer. I'm going to put it on a USB flash drive just so I could bring this to other places. But you can put it on your desktop or any part of your hard drive you prefer. So I'm going to make a new folder right here. And I'll name it Portable Install A. You don't have to name it this way, but it makes it easier if you're creating multiple portable installs. Then we can drag the application to that folder. I'm also going to rename the application to make it easier to find later. Now, if we double click this now, it won't be a portable install. It'll still behave like a normal install in your applications folder. We need to create a preference file that goes in this folder, a reaper.ini file. And we could do this with any word processor. So I'm going to go to my applications folder and choose text edit although you can use any word processor you want. I'll create a new document, and I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm just going to save it with a name. I'll name it Reaper 
.ini. It has to be spelled just like this, with the extension INI. And we should deselect the option down here, which is going to put a text extension at the end. We don't want that. It needs to end with .ini. So I'll create it in the same folder with our portable install. Then we can quit text edit. And that file is right here. We should also double check by right clicking it, get info, and make sure the extension isn't hidden right here. Because sometimes it'll hide the extension and make it a text file with the extension txt. We don't want that. So now we can double click this and create a portable install in this folder. But before we do that, let's export some customizations from our current Reaper install. The one right here, we'll go to our preferences, under general, and go to export configuration. Here we can choose what configurations we want to save. Our main preferences, our themes, plugin presets, effects chains, anything we want. Now for me, I just want to save any custom actions or keyboard shortcuts I created. So go down here to actions and key bindings. And I want to save that so I could use it in my portable install. And if you want to create a completely clean install, you could skip this step. Or just export the things that you care about. So I'll save it and export it to my flash drive over here and name it my actions. So I can go back to the Finder or the Explorer, and we can see that file right here. So now if I double click on this application, it's going to create our portable install. And now it's going to make all the files we need right over here. And it's also going through or scanning all the plugins. And it's important to note that our main plugins in our system are not part of the portable install. So if you're moving Reaper to a different computer, you need to bring the plugins separately. We'll set up our audio interface because it's a fresh install. And here's that portable install of Reaper. So now we want to bring in all the actions I exported. So let's go to my preferences, go to general, and choose import configuration. I'm going to go to the flash drive and find my actions that we saved. And it's going to import them right here. And we can see, if we go to my actions list, all the custom actions I created right here, or my keyboard shortcuts that I set up. Those got imported from my other install. Again, we can skip this if you wanted a clean install. But now we can go back to my Finder or my Explorer on PC, and we can create more from that. I don't need this anymore. So I can just duplicate Portable Install A and name it Portable Install B. And let's rename the application as well. Let's do another one and name it C. Name the application as well. And because we already imported my custom actions, each one of these will behave exactly the same until we change them. So let's open all of them. Here's B. And here's C. And each one of these applications is now separate and portable. And we can see them right here in the dock. Portable A, B, or C. So each one of these applications is completely separate. So we can set up different actions for each one, different mouse modifiers, effects chains, anything we want. And they're completely separate from each other. And we can take them with us on our flash drive or even put them in a cloud folder. 
like the iCloud Drive or my Dropbox. And then any computer with Dropbox or any cloud services will have all our preferences and custom actions and anything else we set up available as we run them from those folders. So I can have five computers in five different places that will constantly update when we update each one of them. So it's a great way of sharing all your configurations with different computers you're using. So that's pretty much it. That's creating portable installs in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.